Hey, hello guys, this is Karthik from ExecuteAutomation.com. This is part 11 of our BDD video series. So in this part, we're going to discuss about spec flow bindings. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 7 and part 10 since part 11 is the continuation of those two parts. All right, so spec flow bindings. We know feature files are just a plain text files and that cannot be executed as such. The automation which performs the intended operation specified is also called as bindings. So if you remember, in our step definition file for our feature files, we add an annotation called bindings in our class file. So this is the bindings. You can add this particular class, the step definition class directly by going to the folder step definitions or directly to the project. Just hit add new items. There will be a spec flow step definition files. So if you add this particular file, if I just click add here, you can see it automatically added the bindings for our step definition files and it gives some information about this particular step definition files using this URL and it says like what are the methods are pending so it's just creating a template of uh, the particular steps so this you can add directly using the step definition files which is available uh, in the project or you can directly add an annotation uh, called bindings here so one of the most important binding is step definitions which automates the scenario of our step level so which we know right one of the greatest advantage of step definition is we can split the step in multiple files and also we can reuse the same step in multiple scenarios which we know that if we have a, a step which can be reused across the application or five to six times then probably you can put that particular step in a separate cs file and Specflow is more intelligent enough to pick that particular step automatically from that particular CS file and it start working from there. So that can be done using the step definition bindings. So do you think only these are the only bindings which are available in step definitions? Of course not. We have some more advanced bindings available in Specflow. Those are hooks, step argument transformations and scope bindings. So we'll talk about hooks and step argument transformation in this video hooks if you already worked with visual studio code ui or in java like test ng or j unit you might have uh, some information on before test after test uh, before uh, method after method uh, similarly before test contest after test contest like in code ui test so those are the attributes and uh, in Java they are called as annotations. So those are things are available which can be used the test frameworks uh, to perform some operation before the actual test starts. So similarly here in specflow we call it as hooks and they have some of the attributes like before test run, after test run, before feature, after features, before scenario and after scenarios. So these are uh, more helpful while you try to do some kind of environment setup operations before you run the actual test. Let's say you want to open a browser before your test to start. So you can call before test run. Or if, if you want to do some kind of operation for that particular feature, then you can do before feature. You can, then you can use before feature attribute. Right. Similarly, there is something called before scenarios, before scenario block, before steps. And the important thing to note is the before test run attribute can be applied only to a static method. Similarly, before feature attribute can be applied only to the static method. Whereas before scenario and before scenario blocks, these can be applied directly to a non-static method also. All right, so these are the hooks. So let's see them in act. So in order for us to add the hooks for spec flow, what we can do is we can directly right click the project, hit add new items. And there you can see a specflow hooks file available. This is nothing but in event binding files. So here all the attributes are called when any event happens. Let's say if the test has to start, then before test attribute is called. Similarly, if a feature is going to start, then before feature attribute is called. So these are basically an event. So that's why they call it as an event bindings. So let's create the hook file. So I'm going to call this as test fixture.cs. 
hit the add and you can see the spec flow is very intelligent enough to add attributes for me directly and here it has added the bindings attribute for the class test fixture now let's add a console.write line for the before scenario method and see if this scenario method is being called before every scenario executes so I'm going to do like calling before scenario alright and then I'm going to add a console.write line for this particular method and I'm going to say calling after scenario all right and we'll see like this this attributes are called once the test starts all right so i'm going to the text explorer and uh, let's build the project this is the same project which we used so far in our video series so i'm going to run one of the tests from this particular test which is listed i'm going to run this let's see if it runs okay it executed let's go to the output and as you can see here there is something called calling before scenario. So before a scenario starts, this particular attribute is being called, the before scenario attributes. So this is called, and then the scenario is executed. And once the scenario is done with its execution, then calling after scenario attribute is being called. Let's try adding a before feature attributes. As we already know that before feature attribute can be added only to a static method. So I'm going to add public static void before feature oops before feature and then we can add like calling before feature all right let's save it and now the question is uh, do we all always have to give this before feature for this particular method it's not like that you can give any name for this let's say called first in my feature so even if you give this it still works and uh, don't forget to add the attribute so I'm going to say like before feature all right so once it is added let's go back to the test explorer and run the same test once again and we'll see what output we get so it's executing yep it's done let's go to the output and you can see here that the calling before feature is first called and only after that the scenario is being called as you already know in a feature the scenario is there within a feature file so first the feature has to be called and then only then the scenario has been called so these are the hooks which are available in visual studio and can be used in many instances like before starting an application opening a browser or connecting with application database or test database and retrieving some values out for inputting the values to our test all right let's go back to the slide once again the next bindings we're going to discuss about is the step argument transformations. We already discussed about step argument transformation in our part 7. So one of the very useful functionality in binding using step argument transformation is transforming a table type to our .NET custom types. We already seen in part 7 that we tried to create a uh, table uh, from, our, from our features and then using create set we converted all the table data directly to our custom .NET class type. Create set is an extension method of table helper extension methods class, which will transform the table type to employee class by automatically mapping all the values to class properties by table column names. And this is already discussed in part seven. If you if you want to just go through the details of create sets then I would request you to watch part 7 there you can find all the details of create set all right so that's all for today guys thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day